All right, J-O-N, get back serious. Okay, J-O-N, that's a great place to let these people know, man. Come on, man, you, you don't play too much, man. Time to let these people know that the black market is open. <laughs> and you're not about to pull up at the black market and do all this shopping and not stop through there and holler at the people that's going to keep you alive, too. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, don't, I don't care who, you, how good you live and you could be living gooder. That might be the name of my book. <laughs> you might be on the sun, bro. You might be on the sun. How to live gooder. Yeah. <clears throat> I could do that. All right, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm inspired. But nah, man. We got we got a very special guest on the black market with us today, J-O-N. You could just look on the table and already see where this is going. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to tell you these are his books. These are his herbs. This is his cleanse. Herbalist, nutritionalist. Sometimes I just be throwing stuff in there, right? I mean, spiritual leader, <laughs> uh, holistic healer. Yeah, all kinds of things that can be said, all type of titles yes, that can be said. But the most important one is Dr. Yes, sir. Bobby Price. I appreciate that. Right? That's the most one. Like, out of all the things you can say, just that's, make sure you put the doctor in there, right? I mean, I, you like that part, but what I've, I've grown to understand now is, like, the healer part is the most important. Right. Because you ain't a good doctor without no healer. You can't heal nobody. Got, then. Exactly. What are you? You know what they are. <laughs> you know, it's a name for exactly what they are. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it, but you know what they are. Yeah, bro. So yeah, yeah. I, I I respect the the journey, the struggle to be able to get that title. Right. I respect that part. But then it's like I have one I have one foot in over there, and now I got the whole two feet over here now. All right. First of all, before we even get started, how you feeling? Man, I'm feeling amazing. I just got off an airplane to get here. Word. And was excited the whole time to come here and talk to you because I like the way in your approach to making topics like this adding a little humor to it, making it fun, because, you know, for our people, right. when it comes to health, we don't want to talk about that shit. Yeah. So <clears throat> I was excited about having a conversation with you so that we can make this uh, not only funny, humorous, but also something people can get into to understand, like, when you take your health to the next level, you take your life, you take yourself to the next level, too. Right. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I guess some people feel like they're so far behind in the get healthy situation but it's like you can start changing your life at any moment yep yeah. and you and a lot of people who in the position who have the knowledge y'all have to let these people know that and you gotta make them feel like like they're not being left behind yeah like it, it can start at any moment it's what yeah, i'm saying yeah yeah and that's that's what it's all about bro like we gotta break generational curses right like you know we see healthy food we say that's white folks food Right. You see, um, you know, we we see our grandmama had diabetes, our uncle had hypertension, this cousin died of cancer, it ran in the family, so we right. just accept it. And um, I just think it's important that we get to a place where we make it unacceptable. Right. You know, because, you know, like, man, when I say, like, our people are different, we different. But just imagine who we would be if we were healthy. Yeah, when it comes to health, we at the bottom of the pole in every category. So that's all I want to see for our people, bro, is like us achieve what we know what we're capable of doing. Right. Yeah. 
And then you put it right here in the book. So what we got right here? Yeah, so um, <coughs> my first book, I wrote this in 2018. I lived in Japan for like five years. For real? You scared yeah. the hell out of them Japanese people then. Actually, you know what's so crazy, dog? When I moved there, I didn't know what to expect. You, you got a, a, a black man moved in Japan, don't know how to speak Japanese. What, the, what made you do that? Well, so I told you, like, I, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure when I was 16. Okay. Uh, went on this healing journey once I was in the hospital here in Atlanta. Started healing people here, and I was, like, trying to do it in the hospital, but they wasn't with it. And so I had read this book called Ikigai. It means the, finding the purpose of life, and it's a Japanese book. And uh, in there, they're talking about people in Okinawa, Japan, how they live to 100. And this is a small island where they have the largest amount of people who live to 100. And they primarily eat a plant-based diet. Mm. And so I had read the book, and out of the blue, I get an email. Um, somebody saying, hey, we would like you to come to Japan and work. And mm. I'm like thinking it's spam, so I just delete it. And they kept emailing me, and then a friend hit me. He was like, no, I referred them to you because you was talking about Japan. So I reached out to him set it up. I ended up working there in a hospital for like almost five years, but I also did some research on the people there. It's a small community of people who live the lifestyle that really, like, my grandmother, great grand, my great-grandmother lived. And so um, that's what kind of led me to Japan. Mm. And so after being there for <coughs> five years and then traveling for another two years and learning everything I learned in Africa. What Honduras, made you, what was the, the main thing you found out that made them live so long? Man, so it's, it's their whole lifestyle. Like, they have a, a principle called harahachibu, which means eat to 80%. It means don't eat till you're damn full. Okay. So, and, and it's scientifically proven because when you get to 80%, your, bra your brain has a 20% lag time. So you don't even know that you're already full because the brain is behind. Mm. So they have principles like that. They eat primarily plants. You know, so I get to see what they eat. Uh, they drink a lot of herbal teas. Uh, they eat a lot of seaweed. And there's a lot of nutrients in the sea that we can't get from the soil today. So just watching their lifestyle in that way, but also the peacefulness of their lifestyle. That's one thing that when I was in Okinawa, I learned was, man, that was the first time I felt like I didn't have to feel like I was black. I was just a human being. And growing up in an environment... That shit that peaceful, it'll make you forget you black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, you think I'm just going to... Man, hell no. <laughs> Ain't no way them folks that nice. I'm trying to tell you, bro, it's different. It's different, bro. Um, I, the expectation we have, because our interaction here with Asians is very different. And so when I go there, I'm expecting the interaction I get here, which is no interaction. And yeah, when I but go you there, ain't a lot of Japanese people in America, though. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Not primarily was, here in the South. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think we have a lot of not here in the that South. type of Asian. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to Buford Highway and places like that. But you go to cities like California and places in California, even Houston, Texas, Seattle, yeah. and everywhere. Yeah. And so I go there and it shifted my whole entire perspective because, like, I remember, like, I, I started taking karate there. Now that's racist as hell. Well, I'm just saying. You're gonna go over there and take karate. Bruh, is where karate originated. No. Nah. Mr. Miyagi? Nah. <laughs> nah, I shouldn't have asked. You know how black people are. Like, we here, this is what this place is for. We like, we go in there to find out what it's about. Yeah. So I was like, shit, I'm going to Okinawa. <laughs> remember, remember Karate Kid? Yeah, yeah. The whole scene, the monsoon. Yeah. I'm like, all right, so I'm doing karate. So I take karate and. You know, I'm, they're looking at me and I'm thinking like, they're like, this big black dude, what is he doing here? But they're marveling. They're like, damn, you black and you here. And that, and it wasn't like you black and you here, it was like, you different and you here. And I would always go to the, you ever seen a black person before? And they like, yeah. You? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing was, it was all, it was never about the blackness. So that's what it was Now like. that you gone, they probably be telling people, we had a black guy here. <laughs> <laughs> no, real shit, real shit. Nah, there's a picture, there's a picture of me there. So, um, you know, it's just a very unique experience, bro. Yeah. And um, to go there, have that real experience and then come back here, that's partly what the, 
the first book is about education over medication. Yeah. Was I realized that their lifestyle was my great grandmother's lifestyle, which is from here in the South. Like she lived on a farm. She got the food from the, the side of the house, the back of the house, and the front of the house. Mm. She got the herbal remedies from the back of the house, the side of the house, and the front of the house. Like whenever we got sick. But my grandmother's lifestyle was very different. She had 11 kids. We had Crisco. We had Jimmy Dean. We had things like that. Unpro very processed, unnatural food. And so it reminded me when I went there, like my great grandmother lived like they did. Okay, and my grandmother, who died at 67, she lived like we do today. Mm. My, grand, my gra uh, great granny, she died at 105. So it showed me the differences between the lifestyle. So I wrote this book, Vegetation Over Medication, to really show people how plants are at the foundation of how we heal. Mm. And so that's what that book is about. And to break down a lot of the myths, vibes, and truths around medicine and food, what we consider food, what re really isn't food. So that's the, that's the first book, mm. you know, and then, uh, you know, as I'm like creating that, people wanted to know how I lost 45 pounds and normalized my blood pressure. So I had did my own detox and I was my first guinea pig. And so at first I wasn't even thinking of like making it a product, a product, but I understood chemistry because I was a pharmacist and a chemist. And so when I started to look at the food and look at the labels, I started to look at the ingredients and all the ingredients start to look at them. They sound like chemistry. You can't even pronounce half of the words. Now, when I look at it because I'm a chemistry major and a pharmacist, I know what they mean. I know that some of those ingredients are also in paint thinner. I know that some of those ingredients are aluminum. And I know a lot of these things we're feeding to our kids and I know how they affect the body. So now I'm looking with a different eye now. I'm looking with the eye not only of a, of a chemist, now I'm looking at the eye of an herbalist now too. And so now I'm realizing what I'm doing to myself. And yeah. so I said, now I gotta get this out of my body. How do you get things out of the body? Well, how did great, great grandma get it out of the body? Give me two tomatoes and <laughs> head of lettuce. And Go out there and pull up that root. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's how I created the detox, man. So get rid of parasites and yeast because we have a lot of parasites and yeast in them. But you know, the, back in the day, they had this um, song called the Freaks Come Out at Night. Yeah. That's what parasites and yeast do. That's why you get those sugar cravings at night. That's why you wake up at night. That's why you grind your teeth at night. And so a, a lot of us have parasites and yeast in our bodies, but we don't know it. But it's killing our health. So that's one part of the detox. And then the tummy detox, that's where all the, you know how people have that uh, that belly they trying to get rid of it, they just can't. I see people who work out, get, get skinny everywhere else, but the belly still stays. Jack through. And, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I always tell people like, you know, like where do they say intuition comes from? Comes from the gut, right? Man, call now. <laughs> Man, you know, you ever heard some shit and you be like, my homies need to hear this. <laughs> But, you know, intuition comes with the gut. For, but when your gut is full of shit, shit, how can you trust your intuition? That's why people be saying, man, you full of shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that, the whole idea is you full of it. And so you don't have any connection with your intuition and your truth. Right. And so that's what the Tommy Tox is for, to get rid of all that waste out yeah. of your body as well, too. And, you know... Along the journey, people was like, how do you make, you know, like my family is primarily from the South. And I grew up with a mother who cooked three times a day. I didn't eat a lot of like McDonald's and Burger King because first of all, we couldn't afford it. Damn. And then second of all, this like, back in the day too, McDonald's yeah. wasn't even high. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but you funny. know, like my mom cooked all our food. And yeah. so, and she was the cook in the family. And so people are trying to figure out, well, how do you make white people food tastes good. How do you? Well, you got You think don't, you throw it away. <laughs> no, I'm just bullshit. <laughs> Facts, when it come to the casserole. But um, think about meat, like you make a steak. Right. If you don't put plants on it, it don't taste good. That's the a salt, pain. The That's pepper, a pain. the rosemary. That's a pain. No, eat it without it then. Eat the meat without anything on it. How's it gonna taste? 
fucked up. You know this. That's See how you have to See, the, fuck, you have to construe <laughs> some shit to make a point. You ain't talking about the shit ain't good without no plants. It ain't. Shit. Shit. So eat meat with next time, go home. Get the best steak in the world. Put it on the grill. Don't put nothing on it. That's terrible advice. I would I'm, not I'm, let you be I know his. it is. Now see, now I see why they put warnings on everything. Don't you ever do that. <laughs> but that's my plan. My, my sort of point is like, yeah. it's the plants that make it taste good. Yeah. Like the seasoning, the, the, the herbs, etc. So I tell people I use those same seasonings and herbs to make my plants taste good. Oh, okay. So that's why I created the, the cookbook and a lot of the recipes in there are actually West African uh, recipes as well too, because I figured like we need to tap back into our heritage. Heritage. So I got uh, a plant-based version of jollof rice. I got a plant-based version of right uh, fufu. Yeah. Uh, All this plant-based. Yeah. Uh, plant-based version of okra stew. Uh, and I think it's important for and, and even like plant-based versions of comfort food like you know chicken, fried chicken, and things of that nature too, because I realize like. Our people, like, we, we solely connected with our food, and most of our gatherings, when we come together, we're, it's centered around food. But it's important for us to know, just like the movie Soul Food, you know, everything was centered around food, but the unfortunate thing was Big Mama died because of the food. So we got to not only change up our mental approach to how we come together, but change up the food and how we do it, too, because the food is so different today. It's not what it was you know, 60, 70 years ago when great-grandmother was making it for us. It's totally different, so. Man, you got a lot of recipes in here, too. Yeah, and then you got the, uh, the, the remedies, remedies in it, too. Yeah, put yeah. some remedies, iron deficiencies, uh, the black circles on it. A, a lot of the things that plague our community, but these are things that grandmother would have had a remedy for, you know, and you could have literally gone to the you know, the, the herbalist or your backyard and got a lot of these. Like how many of us grew up and there used to be like some kind of like plum tree or oh, you peach got me. tree? My boy got the alkaline barbecue sauce yes, in sir. there. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Put that on a real organic wing. <laughs> <laughs> a grass-fed chicken wing. <laughs> so yeah, man, just try to get a people, you know, something healthy but package it in such a way where it's still nutritious and delicious, so. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's catching on, though. I'm proud of the black community. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. you know, even if people haven't fully committed to just eating a whole plant-based lifestyle, I'm starting to see it being incorporated more. Yeah. It's more and more into regular Yeah, diets. it's a journey, bro. Like, I'm not one of those people who push, like, you need to go vegan, you need to do this, you need to do that. What I'm pushing is like change your mindset around how you feed yourself. Just start incorporating it into your. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like, there's a mental connection to when you eat something healthy, you like tell yourself, like, damn, I, I did something for myself good today. Like, yeah, you yeah. take a picture of it, like, yeah. But then the eat. parasites be like, nigga, we hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's how it is, too. You're in that battle. And. You know, that's why I tell people, like, we're in spiritual warfare now in so many different ways. Yeah. Like, we're in spiritual warfare with the parasites. It's trying to make us eat things that are unhealthy for us. We're in spiritual warfare with the government. We're in spiritual warfare with those that they call they. Yeah. We're in spiritual warfare in so many different ways. So it's Hell so important yeah. for us to be in tune inside of ourselves. Yeah. And My so. spirit just said, fuck it, turn it into Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, ain't a bad way to go, especially they. Like, I, I always say Tupac... He's born too early. No, nah, he was born in the right time. I figure if he was born today, like, and, and again, there's no, there's no right and wrong, so, but if he was born today, like. He wouldn't be able to be Tupac. Cause one incident with the police, that nigga been locked up so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta keep in mind, Tupac shot a police officer in the ass. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Literally got down and aimed. Okay. Now, you know, if he was but, born then today, that shit would have been on camera. They would have gave him 990 years. Yeah, but just think about this. Think about what what he collectively done in 25 years because he died at 25. Right. And just think about if he had done that today, what would that have done to the people? Just think about that. What just what? Just hold up. Just think about what just happened in Alabama. 
Tupac will and be what, on what Instagram. what kind of spirit that did for the people? Tupac will be on Instagram with 1.7 million followers. <laughs> Niggas like me and you would be his biggest fans. What's wrong with and that? And do you understand that these young niggas be like, man, we hear you, Pac, but man, man, you can't go laugh every time you disagree with somebody. <laughs> but I, I just think, like, the spirit of what he embodied, like, if he had that today. He had that impact on the generation that he impacted. Yeah, for sure. Do you understand that the new generation got a new Tupac? They're different. Yeah. yeah, he was supposed to inspire us. For sure. That the generation that was here to experience him. Yeah. Yeah, but... Are we carrying on his work, though? He, shit, I don't know. Tupac said a lot of shit. It did. It wasn't all positive now. No, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't. But it's the spirit. It's the spirit yeah, of the it. the spirit of thug life. Yeah, but you gotta think, he was 25. Like, think about where you were at 25. Yeah. Yeah, and I think... I wasn't even somebody's baby daddy yet. For sure. I, I was. still have hope. I was. <laughs> I was still, you know, believing in myself out here in the right. street. Right. But I, I, I project on, and I don't want to, you know, belabor this whole Tupac thing. We always think about what he would have become, right? That's it. Yeah. But look at what he is. You just yeah, got to accept sure. it for what he is. Yeah, you never sure. know what he would, would might have would have turned into. Yeah, but we we be hopeful. Might have been a pastor. Nah, I don't think that, but yeah. Shit! <laughs> he might have been a pastor, been in there with Nation of Islam? Nah, like a pastor, like a Southern Baptist preacher. Soon as Mace I'll... turned past. Oh, so you niggas think you got more followers in your church than me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just bullshit. I you never know that. with Tupac, man. He could, you never know. It's the unlimited potential that makes you say what if. Yeah, for sure. Now sure. tell us about the detox and, and the sea moss. What we'll make this sea moss better than the other sea moss, right? Um, well, you know, th that's actually Irish sea moss. It actually comes from Ireland. From the sea? Yeah. And oh. they, they free dive to get it. So most of the sea moss today that people are getting uh, is, is either pool grown or ocean grown. And what, what that means is when sea moss grows in the sea, it attaches the coral, the rock in the ocean. And that's where it extracts most of its, its minerals from. And, and that's the thing about nature we don't understand is that even when you get water, like you get natural spring water, you'll notice when you turn it on the side, it'll have magnesium, uh, calcium, potassium. That's what actually makes the water alkaline because it pulls the minerals out, right? Well, it's the same thing with the sea moss. So if it grows in the ocean and it's not attached to the coral, then guess what? you're not getting the minerals that you would normally get. And most of the people, unfortunately, most of the sea moss that you're getting today is either pool grown or it's grown in the ocean on a line. It's not grown naturally attached to coral. So that's what's a little bit different about mine. Damn it, man. You had to come up here and just ruin it. I mean, you asked me, bro. <laughs> your sea moss ain't real. Your sea moss ain't even from the sea. Yeah. I don't even know if your sea moss last name is really moss. <laughs> Uh, you uh, think that's sea moss, but that's really sea urchin. You see, oh man. <laughs> well, yeah, the, it, I did a whole video on that on YouTube, and it went crazy because like people start. I was giving them tips on how to look at the sea moss. I think I might have scrolled past it and disagreed. This nigga crazy. Yeah, man, but how the fuck is sea moss if it don't come from the sea then? Yeah, is that, but then you go. <laughs> See, everywhere, I, like, all my products, I'll go there and look at it. Man. And so, like, when you, one of them, I won't say where I went, but I went there to go look at it, and they were growing it in the sea. Bro, you, you niggas that eat healthy be so funny to me, bro. Tell me why. Because, bro, you know, if you put all of the videos of, like, healers and shit together, you could just click on them at any moment, and these niggas gonna be saying the most ridiculous shit that you ever heard. Hey, you gotta stop getting extra sauce with your nuggets. Do you know what, what nugget sauce is made of? That's 10% phosphorus. You niggas don't even know what phosphorus is. Phosphorus is the shit that makes your toenails black. And the black man being melanated, the more nuggets you eat, the more sauce you gonna need. That's mean your toes gonna be blacker. Bruh, if you hear that, run. Niggas be saying crazy <laughs> shit. So you niggas like smoothies, right? So y'all like smoothies. Do you know that they blend in smoothies at 67 miles per hour? 
Do you know what 67 <laughs> miles per hour does to melanated people? That shit turns your insides up. See, the smoothie never stops moving. So you basically got a cyclone going on in your stomach. And once you mix that with the nugget sauce and the phosphorus, no wonder you can't boo-boo. <laughs> That's, that's probably why people get boo-boo, bro. <laughs> ah, Dr. Bobby. You know, because you done heard this shit. I have. I have. Flintstone vitamins ain't real vitamins. <laughs> might be real with that one. I know. Right? That one might be. But you know, you the pharmacist. Indeed. Man, give us some give us some home uh, remedies right now that people might have at the crib already. People right. out there in TV land watching. I'm sure you're gonna make it a joke. I'm not. I'm <laughs> I'm giving you some do the doctor. All right, cool, cool. One. They gonna laugh at your shirt anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll take that. You gonna take that shit back to Mr. Miyagi? <laughs> <laughs> they on your ass. It ain't gonna be me. All right. So one is um, <laughs> old remedy too. When you have a lot of cold in your system, yeah, you uh, slice an onion in half, put it on the bottom of your foot, and uh, wear a sock on it. And when you go to sleep, yeah, it'll pull the mucus out of your body. It will. Yes, yeah, so. most definitely. My granddaddy told me that. <laughs> I ain't bullshitting. I told them that. They looked at me like I was crazy. All right, cool. I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> you can't tell. I know where. All right, cool. I so, know how far to walk behind Grandma's house and get that red dirt. All right, gotcha, gotcha. So another one I use often is uh, oregano oil. Mm-hmm. Antiviral, antibacterial as well, too. Uh, so I was raised on cod liver oil. Cod liver, okay, got you. Uh, that shit, you won't get sick. Mine get sick my whole childhood. Okay, got you. Uh, I had the immune system of an 87-year-old <laughs> war veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what easy one is uh, I drink um, ginger and key lime tea every morning. It's like an alkalizer to the body. It's also anti-inflammatory as well, too. So, and don't go get the ginger packets. Get the actual ginger root. Slice it up. Put it in there. I also do like ginger, sli uh, ginger shots. Okay. Uh, so you I looking at me like I'm about to say oh, something, bro? I ain't gonna say shit. Yo. Talk your shit, uh, right? Hey, yo, paranoid. Yeah, this is the parasites, bro. Like the parasites I'm, got you paranoid. No, I feel like I'm, I'm like setting you up for your comedic act. <laughs> I ain't even say so shit. I'm, like, I'm throwing the alley hoop. No, nah, I ain't saying shit. <laughs> so that's really good as well too. Sea uh, moss. Gotta have that. The okay. good cat from the sea. Yeah. Not that sea. shit from the lake or the pool. Yeah. Uh, Real sea moss. It's good for the skin, so you can use it as a mask. Uh, you could use it like for uh, when people have uh, is skin issues like eczema. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can put it on the skin. Uh, put it on your feet, see what it do. Will it make your feet smooth? I don't know about that, but you can kind of use it as a, a like just to cleanse off your skin. Yeah, so those are just a, a few uh, that are really, really good. Where are the books available and where can they get? The detox in it. Uh, you can go to drbobbyprice.com uh, to get all the books. Uh, you can check it out also on Amazon just to see the reviews. But don't don't buy for them. Buy for me. Buy for, um, for I got it's over 1,600 five star reviews on my book, Vegetation Over Medication. Uh, that's a top seller too as well. And then um, the book in the middle. I just I literally just wrote that. Uh, a month ago. It just came out a month ago. It's called Life is My Guru. And uh, in the book, essentially what I talk to people about is how to use your own life experiences to determine what life is trying to teach you. I spent about two years after li leaving Japan uh, just traveling the world, studying like spiritual healers and leaders and gurus and things of that nature. And uh, what I realized so after I traveling the world was that really life teach you everything. Mm. And there's always a lesson. And so in the book, I use my own life lessons to kind of show people how life can really teach you what life is about and what God and what your life is about. I believe our life is like a spiritual curriculum. Everything that happened to you is happening to you for a reason. And so um, I think what's important for us is to kind of figure out how we can kind of decode what life is really trying to teach us, so. Damn. You had a hard life. <laughs> yeah, man.
Broke your neck? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Shit. Hey, man, it look like you got it all figured out, my man. So let not, them know not, where they can find you, social media, all of that. Because yeah. they're going to find your page and talk about your shirt. Gotcha. I promise you. Yeah. I, I know my fans. And uh, just hit me in the comments. I'll let you know where I got the shirt. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you can find me at drbobbyprice.com. On social media, I'm Dr. Bobby Price on YouTube, Dr. Holistic. Holistic. Uh, on uh, Instagram. And uh, would love to connect with my people to help you on your healing journey, bro. Most definitely. I'm yeah. definitely on mine. Indeed. Hell yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm on my, I've got some real sea moss from the sea. Yeah. Don't ask me nothing until you get some, because your sea moss ain't real. And I know that that's hard to hear, but I don't mind being the person to say that. And so, cut down on the nugget sauce. Don't be dipping your, don't double dip your nuggets. It's got <laughs> phosphorus in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, the black market wide open. <laughs>